thank you for learning with the more Janelle. So we are going over the techniques to making a wig with a ventilated cap. So at this point, you should have your head measurements ready to transfer to the wig block. My client's circumference is a 22. So that's how you transfer the circumference by deciding on which wig block to use. If it was a 21 and a half, 95% of the time, I make those clients on a 22 as well, but I do have a 21 and a half wig block. So at times I'll use it. If their front to nape measurement is very small, I tend to stick to the 21 and a half wig block. And again, I will have Q&A in the back of your guide. So feel free to see if you can get any of your questions answered from the Q&A. If not, that's why I created the Wig Genius Training Room. You can come with your pictures. You can come in and get the support that you need from myself and or others in the group. So the goal is for you to be situated for success at a very feasible amount um, when it comes to just learning. So I hope you find this very helpful. Let's get into it. I have my head measurements. So let's see how more Janelle does it. I only focus on three measurements with this wig cap. But remember, you only can use the circumference. And I'll go into why I use the other two measurements, which is the front to nape and the temple to temple. I have a link in your Q&A that shows you how to transfer all of the measurements for a dome wig cap. So transferring your front to nape, you start right here. My wig block is already marked off. So to get an idea of where you're starting, the temples protrude out right here. You should be about a half inch up. So if it protrudes here, that's where it tends to protrude. So I'm starting right here. And from this mark, I would go down to her front to nape measurement, which is a 14. So my 14 is right here. Again, it's already marked off on my wig block. Next, I would transfer the temple to temple. Her temple to temple is 16. Half of 16 is eight, which is why I put it here. So I'm put, placing the eight here because it's so important to stay symmetrical. I need my right side to be the same as my left side. So if my eight is here, keeping it flat, I don't drag it down. It's bringing it up. 16. So you just would pin it to 16. And over here, you would pin right here at the beginning of the zero. Now you want to look to make sure it looks symmetrical. If anything, you just even it out. You move the pin a little bit and that's it. After transferring your head measurements, you have to decide and select the correct wig size cap. So I'm using a medium cap. If it was a 21, I'll be using a small cap. If it was a 23, I'll be using a large cap. These caps have a line in the middle. I always try to take this line and even it up with the wig block with the line right here in the middle. Because if you don't remember anything else, you always want to stay symmetrical when you are making wigs. Don't just slap the wig cap on. So it's here. Now remember I told you, you don't necessarily have to use these measurements, which is your temple to temple. But this is why I transfer. I like to make sure that my cap is going to go to the temple to temple. So let's say if her temple to temple was a 19, it would be more right here. And that's someone with a very low hairline. Or a small forehead. So I have my wig cap on. It's fitted all the way is filled in. This cap does not stretch the same way a dome cap would. So although I transferred my front to Nate, I don't need to try to make this cap get to this measurement. This cap is designed to just fit the head. So trust that you have the right circumference. You put it on symmetrical. 
this ribbon is aligned with the middle line as well and I'm ready to go so I will pin this cap just to secure it and when I'm pinning it I'm just at the corners now this is a 14 if the measurement was like a 12 it'll be further up so that's why I transfer because I want to at least make sure I have this area at or above the front to nape measurement so this cap is good and the same with my temple to temple if this cap didn't come to the temple to temples and this was her measurement I would get this and slide it up to the measurement so I know this cap is going to do well on my client's head with the measurements that I have. And I'm just pinning this down just so that it's secure. Now, once you have that, you need to decide if you need to remove any space from the cap. In this case, there's really no extra space to remove from the cap. And how I know that, I'm looking at the size. If my sides were more like this, you can see all of the extra space that you need. And depending on the circumference that you're working with, there are going to be times where you're going to need to remove the space. So imagine if this was a 21, even the small cap, sometimes you need to remove extra space. And the way you do that is you pinch it. By pinching it, I bring it in to the first ribbon, which is right here. As I pinch that space in, I will pin it. What you do to one side, you will do to the other side. So after removing the extra space, Now, you would get your needle and thread and sew your cap to the ribbon. And when you're doing that, you're just getting your needle with your thread here. And you're going through the ribbon. That's it. So you would be going through the ribbon with the mesh to secure the fold. What you do to one side, you will do to the other side. And because I know my client has an average size head, I'm not going to remove any space. If you ever make a wig and say, you know what, next time it could have been a little tighter here. It doesn't look like you need to remove space. Just tighten it up by folding it in and remove some extra space. Now it's time to pin your lace closure or your lace frontal. So here I have a 13 by four lace frontal. This is the hairline. When I mention hairline, this is exactly what I'm talking about right here. The beginning of your hairline. And so that you can really see the placement, I am not going to use this lace frontal. I am going to use a hairless one so that you can really see through the lace and see where I'm pinning it. Here I have a lace frontal and this will be considered the hairline. The first thing is fold it in half because everything we do needs to be symmetrical. I am very good at eyeing, but I don't eye. I like to just know my center and when you have that middle mark, you take a pin and you put it right here. And I am putting it in front of the hairline. And whether I put it a half inch in front of the hairline down here is still in the middle. I personally just like to put it just right below the hairline. And the hairline is what I focus on being about a half inch off of the cap. So I place my hairline here. If you want, you can find the center for the back as well. Once you have it on, just fold it in half.
and here is my center again I will be right in the middle of the line and I'm looking at this line I can see it through the cap now the next thing you want to do your lace frontal naturally has a curve to it pull it with tension and I align it off right here at the ear tab so here I am and I don't pin on the cap I pin right below the cap because when it's time to sew your wig cap on and I don't teach sewing but if you need help sewing definitely come into the wig genius training room and I make sure that I attach the lace closure to the cap. I get my ends really good and I just go across. It doesn't matter if you start in the middle and come down or if you start on one side and go down as long as you do it once you've pinned your frontal. What you do to one side, you do to the other side. So I'm here and I'm pinning it down. As you can see, the M shape that was created, that's what you want to see. You want sides hanging off on both sides. And this is how you pin your frontal on a ventilated wig cap. Now, let's move on to the lace closure. If you need help with this, again, if you really want to see the glueless method, please come into the Wig Genius training room. Become a member and get the support that you need for myself and others in the group. Now, on to the lace closure. Here I have a 5x5 five five lace closure, and I'm using a larger closure because sometimes it's harder to pin um, than a 4x4. Four four. A 4x4 four four just pretty much easily just fits here. But everything is the same technique. You take it and you fold it in half because I'm finding the middle. Once I fold it in half, I put a little pin here in the middle. And I put it right below the cap. And I'm going to flip this down so that you can see. The pin is right below the cap. Now, once I have that done, you want enough tension here so that it's tight. Don't overstretch it my ends and by the ends I mean right here in this area will be pinned to the cap and again when I pin it I like to be I'm right below the hair because I am going to make sure when it's time to sew that I get it here and get in good right through here I make sure I attach my ends very good. Once you have that, you just pull it straight back. And I'm going to do it from the side here so that you can see. And I remove it off of the wig block and bring it up. So one of the most important things is I like to just take two pins and put it in the corners of each one. And the reason I do that. It's because I am going to take this both and pull out and straight back at the same time to ensure that it's flat. And as I can see, I have a little bit of space here. So I will adjust to pull that space out. And what you do on one side, you do to the other. You want to make sure that it's flat all the way around. So now you can see, and I'll remove this up, that it's flat here. And when it's time to sew, you're going to end up still, it's going to come this way. So what I mean by that is, Here you have it, close up, as you can see. When I'm sewing, I still would be able to pull the lace closure down and so that it's tight. So after you pin your lace closure or your frontal on, you then take your needle and your thread and you sew all the way around. 
And knowing how to sew is a prereq for this course. If you don't know how to sew, um, definitely just join me in the Wig Genius training room. I can show you how to sew or I create a link if that's a question that I'm seeing. And I will do a recording of me actually sewing. So now the next step is to draw your guidelines on. But I am going to remove this. Okay, so here we are back and I am showing you a 23 circumference now. So this is a 23 wig block. This is a large wig cap. And as you can see, it's pinned on and there's no space. I never take the space out of the large caps whenever I'm dealing with a 23. My five by five closure is attached. Sewn all the way around. And now I am going to show you how to draw the guidelines for the closure. We will also go over the frontal guidelines, but they are pretty much the same as drawing the guidelines for the closure. So first, let's go over the frontal. If you were drawing guidelines for a frontal wig, remember when you have on your closure, your frontal, it comes here off. So it's up to you if you want to draw your guidelines with the first one coming around to the other side and then drawing them straight across as I am about to show you how we do it for the closure wig. So it's just a preference. There's no right or wrong way when it comes to, no, there is a wrong way, but there is many right ways to drawing your guidelines. You can draw them straight across. You can do your first track going around and then straight across. So let's get into drawing our guidelines and we will be doing it using a closure. You do not want to sew on this little piece. So I move it out of the way. This right here, because this is what the adjustable band would go through. Same thing on this side. Now. With drawing my guidelines, my first one is trying is going to be as close as possible here. So it's going straight across. Now my next one is here. And they are about a half inch apart. And you would just continue straight across. It's okay to sew on the band if you want to. This band right here. I do sew on the band if you prefer not to. And then you just start from right here. And draw your line straight across. Now, if, you, if this was a frontal and it was here. And you drew that first line going down here. You wouldn't be on the band. All of your lines will stop here. So I'm going to just keep drawing. As I'm drawing, I'm trying to make sure that I'm symmetrical. I have about the same amount of space on this side as I do on this side. My next one is going to go right above here. And I'm going straight across. If it's easier to start in the middle and go out and then do that. If it's easier to turn the block as you do it, do that. You can sew on the ear tabs. You can sew through here. You want to have your tracks coming all the way up. So it's okay to move a pin if you need to because now it's in my way. My next one is going to go right here where I start on one side. I stop on the other side. And I'll show you what I mean here. It's so important that you don't take this line and go all the way up. This is one way for me to see where I'm at right here. So it's not that much space between these two lines. I want to stop the same place here. So between here and here, I'm using this as a guide. So I'm pretty much even. And then you just keep drawing your lines straight across 
my next one I now I'll move this pin because it's still in my way it's here and I'm going across now I want you to see here I'm telling myself you know what I'm a little too wide I didn't really expect to be that wide here so all I would do is just come straighten it out and now I know that I'm not sewing on this little line above so it's okay to straighten your guidelines out if needed my next one is here Stop here. I stop here. So at this point now, I'm going to come out at the tip of the closure. And the same thing here at the tip of this closure. Pay attention to now how much space you're working with. Here. When you're looking at being consistent with your spacing, we're looking at it in the middle because you know on the sides they are going to get a little closer together. So I know I need another line here, another one here, and possibly another one here. So I take that in consideration when I'm drawing my guidelines. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come out. And my next one is just going to stop right here. Same thing on this side. I'm here. My next one is going to stop here. Now, I personally like having a track that goes to sew these ribbons down. So that's why I make sure I put one here. And you can use the dark ribbon piece as a guide. And my line is here. Same thing here. My line is here. Now I only have one line left and I'm going to draw that straight across. And the last track will go around the closure. And you do not have to draw a guideline around the closure because you know to put one around. If you decide not to put one around, I would bring this one up a little further. And then I would close it off with the one right here and I would keep this one right here. So that's just a preference. And remember your guidelines show you the direction to draw in. So you can sew on the guideline below it or above it. Next, we will be going on to sewing. So my sewing machine is set to a zero setting. And with this machine, when I turn it off, and turn it back on, the Brother Project Runway, regardless of the model number, it sets. So the default settings are what you're going to use for a straight stitch. I've already have this double, and for doubling, I use a four, 2.5, and seven, and the four is for a zigzag stitch. So I do have this on my YouTube, um, a tutorial showing you how to double. Let's just get into straight stitching because you will straight stitch your track or wealt onto your cap. I prefer to start with my cap inside. So as I put uh, on the hair, the hair onto the cap, it is falling off to the side and out of my way. So the most, the most important part is just to get your track and wealth attached. I am sewing right here because I drew my first line going curved and around. You do not want to sew your adjustable band down so you move it out the way. And you do not want to sew this down so you make sure it is out of the way as well. Whatever works for you, getting it underneath the sewing machine, that's what you do. So I have my 
well and I am going to just align it here and now I am ready to attach my track to my mesh and with this I get it underneath my footer I raise it a little bit more and position it now I'm ready to sew onto the cap and I'm using a straight stitch I see my needle going into my track and I am sewing on the top track right here so after doubling sew on the top track you must back stitch so I am going to back stitch about four times after back stitching you are ready to sew when you get to the end you must back stitch again and then you're going to cut the actual track I'm aligned right underneath. When you are sewing, you want to make sure that you are not stretching the mesh. And when you're stretching it, this is considered stretching. Don't hold it too tight. It's just a placement. And I'm making sure that I stay on the top track as I sew. You definitely want to practice before you just start sewing your track onto your wig cap. So here. Now, I still have to follow around. Whatever works for you, I am showing you different hand movements because we all sew differently. As long as you follow the techniques. Do not sew and stretch the cap. It's a placement. Hold it and guide it and direct it through. I'm giving you a chance to observe where I am here. So as you can see here, this is the guideline. I am right above the guideline. So I must continue to follow that guideline. Okay, it's so important to practice sewing with a straight stitch. So the red line represents your actual guideline and you will be placing your track on this guideline. And by that, I mean I have one double. So this is the cap. The white part is the cap. I have my guideline. I am placing it here. And I need to sew this straight on the guideline. So to practice, you put your foot down, get your needle, and this will be you putting it into the track, and sew straight. You need to see your needle stay on the track. Go slow if you need to. If you speed it up, stay sturdy. Direct it through. At all times, you need to see your needle hit the track. When you're back stitching, you want to go past the end of the track a little bit, back stitch, and that's going to get it very flat. And I do that about four times. I will stop. Now we're going to go on to the curve. The reason I draw my curve going this way is because my closure and frontal is in the inside. If your closure and frontal is on this side of the sewing machine, you want your curve to go this way because that is going to be the direction you're sewing. So practice, put it in. Again, you can decide to place your needle down or not, whatever is easier for you. At all times, you need to see your thread hit. So when I show you on the wig cap, if I say if you accidentally go off your track like this, immediately stop. Try to back stitch yourself back in place. And then you want to sew, back stitch, sew to secure that. And I'll show you why. So I am directing it through. And you want to direct it through at the same speed that you're sewing. 
So all you're doing is just using a straight stitch to sew the track onto the weld. Now one thing about back stitching, go past the end of the track, back stitch. Now when I'm back stitching, I'm pulling the cap towards me in the direction that I'm back stitching. Stop, sew, and then back stitch, sew three to four times. Now, let's take a look at this. So here, remember, the white part is really the cap. So if you go off right here, and I've already sewn on some tracks so that I can show you what I mean. And I made the error. So I went off. Right here, you can see I'm off. I went back stitch back in place and I just back stitch here and then I kept sewing if you can't quickly back stitch in place stop lift your needle up and then just position yourself back on the track back stitch some to secure what you're trying to do here with the back stitching is you are securing the track and the integrity of it because if you leave if you just sew and then come back on, you're leaving this track loose here, and we do not want to do that. So now that you have that, I purposely have some tracks sewn on already, and I have the 13 by 6 frontal attach, and I want to show you how I'm sewing with all of this hair in place on the cap. When you're dealing with a lot of hair, you still have to be able to maneuver and move comfortably with the hair i am getting ready to sew on this guideline i'm making a decision to sew on this guideline i'm going to sew a little bit below the guideline so here i am i'm placing it the most important thing is you getting it up underneath the footer the best way you can i'm not trying to be at the tip and the reason I'm not trying to be at the tip is because it's hard to direct it through sometimes. Get the track up underneath the footer because now I just need to attach it. When I back stitch, I can get the tips. And you want to back stitch three to four times. Now back stitching here is my button. If I just press it, it's going to go back by itself. That's what I like about it. If I press on the footer while I'm pressing it, it speeds it up. So you have to know where your back stitch button is on your machine. Some of them you just push. Now, never sew with the cap wrinkle, always flat. It's a placement. And you're following your guidelines. Stop if you need to. Never sew and you have wrinkles, the cap isn't flat. Make sure your lace isn't underneath and you're sewing it. Everything is smooth and you do not stretch this cap at all. So you're not stretching the cap. Let's see the next one. Get it in underneath the footer. I'm deciding to sew right above this guideline. I'm right here. I am not going to stretch the cap. If you do this, you see you're stretching the cap. Any little stretch of the cap will call budges in the cap. I take my track and I place it here. Now, in the case that your track is like this, it's coming apart or you feel like you didn't double it good enough, what do you do? I then would just take it and double it again or you can just go to a zigzag stitching and it will secure it and I will show you how to do that. So you get it underneath. I'm putting it on my zigzag settings and I am going to put my footer down and secure it. Now, what I want you to see here is I'm not teaching the zigzag technique here, but I am letting my needle go above the track and it's the same thing. You do not stretch. So here, I'm holding it. I see my needle hitting above the track. You cannot get on the plastic with this. So it's just to secure it, to make sure it's good. You maybe didn't double it good enough or for whatever reason. And this is why, like if I'm making my wigs, I like to double it twice. However, when you look here, it's good and double. So I'm showing you all of these different ways and things just in case it comes up with you. So when you got done doubling and I stop, 
the needle is in this track remember when we're doing a straight stitch we want to be on the top track so I'll sew I'm not going to try to stop the needle necessarily but if I could that's good because now when I go back to my straight stitch it's easier for me to try to get on this top track I'm gonna back stitch a little bit so you can see where I am I'm securing it I'm on the top track this isn't going anywhere I'm okay with this again it's flat no wrinkles this is the technique no wrinkles hold it flat it's placement if you need to put your hand underneath and control it with these fingers my thumb is here making sure no hair is in the way lace is in the way I have full control over the track and the cap simultaneously. So now I'm just going to go slow and see myself. Now what I want to do is go off the track a little bit to show you. Uh-oh, I messed up. Stop. Back stitch in place. I didn't quite get back in place where I need to. And because I'm on the ribbon, I can lift it up and try to catch it. And that's exactly what happened. So there's many ways of correcting yourself. The safe way is if you can back stitch, get on good. If not, just stop, lift your needle up, and place yourself. And again, anytime I mess up, I always back stitch in that area. So now it's just time to sew like a pro. I'm above the guideline as stated. I'm holding it here. I see where I'm going. I'm confident in my sewing. I'm on the mesh. I stop. Again, you do not want to stretch this cap. You want to make sure that you don't sew this part down as well, the cap underneath. So it's up to you if you want to cut this off before or after. I do both at times. So I'm good to go. Being very careful not to stretch this. It's a placement. That's it. I'm holding it in place. I sew to the end. Back stitch one time. Stop. Now I'm going to cut it right before I get to my lace whether it's your frontal or your closure. And you just do this all the way up until you complete the wig. And again, you just have to practice sewing with, on a, with a straight stitch. That's the most important part. And then I will make sure I back stitch good enough, making sure my track will not lift up slide it out from underneath and as you can see it is good and flat you want to cut off any extra thread now I'm going to show you sewing the single track on if this happens lift your needle up I'm not editing that out One thing about a double, when you start off sewing a double, and you will see what I mean about how much easier it is and, than doing an actual straight stitch with on a single track. And by that, I mean this is a single track. You really, you can imagine you have two. A little room for error. With one, you have to stay on this track the entire time i don't deal with any little curve ends if they're bent up you can just nip it off and when i back stitch i'm gonna go over and i'm gonna just keep going making sure i go past the end a little bit so that it's good and tight so again i have all of this hair up here I'm making sure that I have control over it. It's nice, smooth, flat, and I'm ready to go. I am going to lift this up, slide it underneath, and I'm here. So, single stitch you have your single same thing you place it right before your lace not on the lace 
My tracks never go on the lace. I get it underneath, I see where I'm going, I place it down, and I sew. If it's easier for you to put your needle in and then do it. I have to make sure that I backstitch this. Stop. Now, the entire time, I am going to keep this flat and make sure that I sew on the track. Take your time. It's okay to go slow if you need to. I see my needle going into my track, and that's what you want. It's flat. I see my needle going into my track. Stop. And if I stop, I always try to get to the next ribbon before I stop. Place it flat, hold it, and sew. And you would just do this up until you get to the end of your closure or your frontal. See here? Placement. I'm making sure I'm not, it's nothing underneath. And here I see the ear tab. So even if it doesn't feel like it is an underneath, make sure you're using touch and eyes. Backstitch one time, I'm going to stop and cut this right before I get to the actual frontal. It comes right here, but not on it. And what I'm going to do is, I'm going to sew past it a little bit. I'm not on the closure. And I'm just going to make sure I backstitch that in good. Stop. Lift my needle up. And here. So you see how all of this hair becomes. Don't let it scare you. It's just a bunch of hair. And it seems like it's in the way. So you're staying focused on your actual foot. I'm going to just remove the thread. And now, enough of me sewing like an amateur. And as you can see, it is good and attached. It isn't going anywhere. And that's what you want. If I'm looking here and I see that it's flat, it's not budging up, you want to make sure that it's like that. Any loose thread, just get it out of the way. Okay, so we're at the last two tracks. And... This is important. So you're following the technique. All of this here. Don't worry about if it's missing plastic or anything. I'm still, I'm using a double. I get it underneath here. My main thing right now is just to secure it. And sometimes I hit both tracks and I'm just moving it. I want this good and secure. Stop. I'm still using a straight stitch, but when you're no longer on the plastic, you can go to a zigzag stitch. And it's a straight stitch. I'm filling in here. That's how I close it up. Stop. Back stitch. Now, what I want to show you here is when I cut my closure, I don't just cut straight down here. This little space right here that you see, I close it up by cutting in on my track. So now I am going to make sure that I sew this flat down right here. So I'm filling in my spaces. And then I stop. Okay. What I want to show you here is I have all of this hair. I fold it so it doesn't get caught up and tangled. Get it from get it underneath there. If it's caught up here, no problem. So, and this lifts a little further, which is the reason why I like it. So closing it up is so important. I still use a double. I like to double as much as possible. On my frontals, more than likely, this track is always double for me. So again, I'm filling in right here. Placement. Just place it. Everything is flat underneath. And I'm going to get it underneath the footer, right? 
Here, you can say if you want to use a straight stitch or a zigzag. So what I'm going to do, I am going to use a zigzag if you decide to use the zigzag. And the zigzag, you just want to make sure that your needle hits above the track. And the zigzag does put that little extra security right here. And again, do not sew. When I just let it go, it's wrinkles. Don't sew with any wrinkles. Flatten it out. It's smooth, it's flat, and this track is placing it. I like the fullness here. It's still going to be super flat with this double track, and that's my concern. And I'm just aligning it right underneath. So you can see close up right here of my needle going slow, and it's puncturing right above the track and not on the frontal. Now, if it gets on the frontal a little bit, no problem. That's okay. And you will be able to see it here. So again, cutting. I'm not going to bring this over on these tracks. If you want to, that's up to you. I mean, really, it's still going to be flat. I end it right here. Any little gaps coming up, I'm not worried about that because all of my hair is getting ready to cover it and be flat. And this is the completed wig that I just made with the kinky straight hair. And as you can see, it's constructed great. 13 by six, I pulled off the plastic. Any little plastic that you can't pull off, you just go back in with something sharp and I just get the little plastic out. But I wanted to show you this so that you can see how it looks. Any little extra red strings that you need to pull off, they just come out. So this is what you want to look for. And this is our frontal wig. 13 by 6. I have my adjustable bands that I didn't sew on. My little piece here that I didn't sew on that I will um, take the adjustable band through. 